Hello, everyone, and welcome to Soft Stories. I'm Stratton, and this is Pepper, and today we are going to be continuing our reading of Snugglepot and Cuddle Pie. Written and illustrated by May Gibbs. When we last left the little gum nuts, they were embarking upon a quest to delve beneath the sea to discover what has happened to their friend Ragged Blossom. In doing so, they have recruited a number of other gum nuts and blossoms who are all eager to join them on this trip beneath the sea. But little do they know that the bad Banksia men, those villains of the stories, have joined forces with the great and evil giant octopus that lurks in the deep, who has demanded food and the Banksia men have decided that the nuts will make excellent tribute for their new master. Let's jump back into the story and see what happens next. And here we are again with my old copy of Snugglepot and cuddle pie. Let's jump forward to where we left off. With all of the nuts reading the signs ostensibly from Snugglepot and jumping into the cool green sea. Now, let us leave them all and see what happened to Cuddle Pie. At first, when he found himself being carried along at such a pace, you will of course recall that on the previous page, poor Cuddle Pie fell off of the lizard bridge and was swept along by the current of the stream. At first he felt afraid, but after a while he began to rather like it. He just floated along, enjoying the scenery as it went by. It was very much like riding a train, only, of course, he didn't know that, as he'd never been on one. Once he passed some great red kangaroos drinking at the water's edge. Another time, he was swept almost into the arms of an astonished old platypus. Another time, he was able to rescue a tiny baby bird, which had fallen from its nest by pushing it into a clump of green ferns as he rushed past. Good on, Cuddle Pie. In almost no time at all, he found himself swirling and whirling right away from the land and out into the sea. Then something caught hold of his legs and dragged him under so quickly that he couldn't think or hear or see. When Cuddle Pie opened his eyes again, he didn't know where he was. All about and above him was water, and a pale green light flooded everything. He was lying on a curious little bed, sticking out high on a wall. There were numbers of other beds, just like his, also sticking on the wall. While he was looking about, a strange creature came floating up to him and gave him something queer to eat. Where am I, please? asked Cuddlepie, 
And what's this? Fish's eggs. You're in hospital, answered the nurse, who was a fish folk. Then she swam away again, before he could ask any more questions. Scrub and rub me, thought Cuddle Pie. How did I get here? Just then he heard voices. Peeping over the side of his bed, he saw, to his great amazement, away down on the floor below him, walking about and talking. Well, who was it? Why, dear little ragged blossom, Cuddle Pie was so excited that he swallowed all the eggs in a gulp and nearly fell out of his bed. He tried to call to her, but his head went all wuzzy, and he sank back, helpless. Yes, it was Ragged Blossom, and with her were little Abelia and Anchovy, and a boy with a large basket full of presents for the patients. While Anne was talking to Dr. Fuchsia's carp and the nurse, Ragged Blossom went about comforting the patients. She liked going with Anne to cheer the poor sick fish folk, and she always used to pay special attention to the new patients, for she thought they would feel so lonely. So she climbed up to speak to one, who looked very miserable, with his head all covered up, and only a little bit of hair sticking out at the top. Won't you have a flower? she asked gently. The patient shook the bedclothes, but made no answer. Oh, do, please, begged Ragged Blossom. All right, then, <laughs> snapped the patient and popped his head out. Ragged Blossom fell off the stool in horror. It was the great shaggy head and ugly face of a Banksia man. With a great cry of fear, she ran to Anchovy. Eels fins, exclaimed the nurse. Great starfish, bubbled the doctor. What's the matter, little one? asked Anne. The man in the bed there, whispered Ragged Blossom. Oh, I'm so frightened. Come home, Anne. He won't hurt you smiled Dr. Fuchsius. We brought him in this morning, one leg off, small boy with him, sick. Like to see him? Oh, come home, wailed Ragged Blossom. Seeing that she was really upset, Anne hastily said goodbye, and taking little Abelia by the hand, hurried away. Just as they were going out of the door, Cuddle Pie roused from his dizziness, sat up, and saw Ragged Blossom. Ragged Blossom! Ragged Blossom! he called, leaning out and waving his arms to her. Come back! It's me, Cuddle Pie! Come back! Come back! But Ragged Blossom didn't see or hear him, and as the big door closed behind her, Poor little Cuddle Pie put his head down upon his pillow and wept. Now at last we come to little Obelia. She is very important, so listen carefully while I tell you about her. When she was a wee speck of a baby, she lay asleep in a pearl at the bottom of the sea. All round her grew beautiful Abelia seaweeds, that is why they called her Abelia, and thousands of rainbow-coloured fish guarded her day and night. There she lay for years and years and years, and while she slept a wonderful wisdom grew in her, though her little body remained the same. I can't tell you why or how, but it was so. At last, one day, 
the pearl burst open and spread out into a beautiful white flower. And that, you remember, was when Ragged Blossom and Snugglepot found her. From that time on, Abelia grew very quickly, and now, as you see in the picture, she is as big as Ragged Blossom. And she was much wiser. So wise, indeed, that not only Anchovy, but John Dory, and all the cleverest fish folk for miles round, came to ask her advice on matters of great importance. So when they came home from the hospital, and Ragged Blossom told Abelia of the bad Banksia men, she went quietly to her thinking room, and counted her pearls. She always did this when she was troubled about anything. She had hundreds of pearls, some big enough to build a house with, some so little that they were nearly out of sight. When Abelia had counted her pearls, she went to Anne and said, Come with me to the flower store man. He has something to tell you. So they went. Ragged Blossom and Abelia hovered about, loving the beautiful flowers and putting their faces to them. For sea flowers are like land flowers. The closer you look into them, the more beautiful they seem. Meanwhile, Anne bought a lovely red bunch, and while she was paying him, the old flower seller leant close and whispered in her ear, There's danger following. How? asked Anne eagerly. The little one, called Ragged Blossom, whispered the old man. The shadows are about her. Oh, tell me, what is it? Anne begged. It is the evil one, the great giant octopus. He sends his shadows out to catch her. Shadows? asked Anne, trembling. Black shadows with shaggy heads and many eyes, answered the old man. At this terrible news, Anne grew so afraid that she called quickly to Ragged Blossom and Abelia, and thanking the old flower man for his kindness, she took their hands and hurried home. Ah, and here we can see Anchovy and Ragged Blossom and Abelia and Frilly and the old flower seller who knows more than he seems. Then Anne told them what she had heard. Don't be afraid, little jellyfish said Abelia, kissing Ragged Blossom and clasping her tightly. I will take care of you. Then without another word, she went to her thinking room. Again she counted her pearls, and when she had counted the last littlest one, she came back to Anne. Dear Anne, she said, go back to the hospital and bring away the little pink boy. Oh no, cried Ragged Blossom. The Banksia man is there. Don't go. Yes, I will go, said Anne. Ragged Blossom rushed out to the stables. She threw her arms about the neck of her favourite dragon and whispered, Bring Anne safely back from the hospital. Go quickly and come swiftly. And then she went to the old coachman and begged him to take care of Anne. Then she found John Dory and pleaded with him to go to the hospital also. Although he was very busy polishing his scales, John patted her kindly and said he would go. Long and anxiously, little Abelia and Ragged Blossom waited at the garden gates. 
and at last they saw the carriage coming in the distance. The lovely dragons came swim loping home, and there, between John and Anne, smiling and chatting, sat little Cuddle Pie. It was a wonderful surprise. Ragged Blossom and Cuddle Pie were so happy, and everyone was so glad because they were so happy that all thought of the Banksia men and their evil shadows vanished away. So Cuddle Pie came to live with John Dory and his kind wife Anne and learned to play trammel net and ride the dragons and eat sea cucumbers. And most of all, he learned to love Ragged Blossom's little pet fish, Frilly. Here we can see little Ragged Blossom speaking to her favourite sea dragon. Aren't they beautiful? I love sea dragons. They are some of my favourite underwater creatures, particularly the leafy ones who are so good at camouflaging themselves. But where do you suppose Snugglepot and Mr. Lizard were all this time? When we last saw Snugglepot, he had gone to bed and fell asleep wondering why Cuddle Pie was so long at the dentist's. You remember? Well, he had hardly been asleep two ticks when he woke with a start. There was a loud knocking at the door. Snugglepot sprang out of bed, shouting as he threw open the door, I'll catch you this time. To his great surprise, there stood Mr. Lizard. He seemed very upset and out of breath. What's the matter? cried Snugglepot. Oh, gum, gasped Mr. Lizard, sinking into a chair and fanning himself with the tip of his tail. Whatever is the matter? repeated Snugglepot. It's Cuddle Pie, moaned Mr. Lizard. He's caught. Caught? gasped Snugglepot. The Banksia men have got him, groaned Mr. Lizard. Oh, gum, 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 what shall we do? How? When? Who? asked Snugglepot, very excitedly. An old tramp came to my house and told me. He said he saw the Banksia men hit Cuddle Pie on the head, put him in a bag and run off down the road to Big Bad City lickety-plick. Snugglepot was pulling on his travelling leaves. We must get off after them, quick sticks, he cried, reaching for his cap. Rag and scrag me, shouted Mr. Lizard, jumping up. Oh, silly sooted cinder that I am. Why didn't I think of that? The plans, cried Snugglepot, rushing to the little hole he kept them in. There they were safe enough. Cramming them into his cap, he jumped onto Mr. Lizard's back, and off they dashed. And in quarter less than no time, there was nothing to be seen but a trail of dust down the moonlit road. No sooner were their backs turned than two black figures stole from the shadow of the house and crept through the open door. They were two very bad Banksia men. Ha <laughs> ha, laughed one of them grimly. They swallowed the bait all right. Gobbled it up, chuckled the other. Got that stuff? Here it is, growled the first, taking a big mug from his bag and placing it on the table. He filled it from a bottle which he also took from the bag and then tied a note round it. On that note was written, Drink this, Cuddle Pie, it cures toothache. Then come to the waterfall at Little Creek. Now you know why it was that Cuddle Pie went one way and Snugglepot and Mr. Lizard another way. 
and you can guess who wrote all those notices, and who it was who caught Cuddle Pie and pulled him under the sea. That would certainly have been the end of Cuddle Pie if Dr. Fuscus Carp had not driven by just as the Banksia man was dragging Cuddle Pie along to the giant octopus. Kind Dr. Fuscus Carp, seeing the Banksia man had only one leg, for he was the one whose leg had been bitten off when they all rushed into the house of the giant octopus, took the Banksia man into his carriage and carried him to the hospital. For, he said, I can make you a new leg, and the little boy looks ill, so a few days in shell will do him good. And after that, the Banksia man had to do what he was told. So when he saw Anne taking Cuddle Pie away, he could only grind his teeth with rage, and he kicked so hard that his new leg came off and had to be fixed all over again. You see what a wicked plot Mrs. Snake and the Banksia men had made. Now, what had become of all the nuts who jumped into the sea? And where is little Winky Jaboa? All in good time, you shall know. First, let's go with Snugglepot and Mr. Lizard and see what happens to them. Old Mr. Lizard galloped and galloped, sometimes stumbling into holes, sometimes jumping logs and scrambling over rocky places, and sometimes shying at the strange shadows cast by the moon. Snugglepot clung to his back with great difficulty, and all night they hastened on till, at last, just as a pale light was stealing into the sky, Mr. Lizard could go no further, and they stopped by a little water hole to drink. An old tramp hobbled up to them as they were resting. Morning, mates, said he, making a long journey. To Big Bad City, Snugglepot told him. I've just come from there, said the tramp. Mr. Lizard asked him anxiously if he had passed anyone on the way. I seen some rough-looking blokes. Very rough-looking they was. One of them was dragging a little cove along and hitting him over the head with a stick. Oh, hitting him cruel he was. Snugglepot and Mr. Lizard had heard enough. With a bound, Snugglepot was on Mr. Lizard's back and Mr. Lizard was off up the road, as if he were the wind. The old tramp burst out laughing and threw off the cloak that covered his head. As he gazed after them, he shook his fist and growled. Travel on. There's someone waiting for you in Big Bad, but it ain't your slimy cuddle pie. All the next day, they pushed on till at last they knew by the number of houses they passed and the crowds of people that they were near Big Bad City. Once they were nearly run over by a motor car and the numbers of young nuts on scooters made them quite nervous. Then they saw a big crowd of nuts watching a football match. But on they went, poor Mr. Lizard's tongue hanging out and Snugglepot stiff with holding on. Still, on they went. And here we can see that scene with all of the nuts gathered together to watch the football scrum. What a pleasant thing it is to watch a footy game. By and by, they came to a big river, there were crowds of nuts and blossoms on the banks. Boats were racing, and the crowds were cheering. It was most exciting. But on they went, till at last they came right into the great city of Big Bad. All the time they went along, they kept asking people if they had seen a Banksia man with a little nut. Nobody had seen them. Mr. Lizard was so tired by this time that... Spying an old shed, 
he hobbled into it, fell down, and went fast asleep. Snugglepot arranged some grass under Mr. Lizard's head as a pillow, and then stole out, for he was very hungry. Oh, how fun! A boat race! And an art gallery. So much to see and do in Big Bad City. This is what many art galleries used to look like. Pictures piled onto the wall as thickly as possible. People used to like the idea that your wealth and taste could all be viewed at once. And so the more paintings you had crammed into a space, the better and more knowledgeable and classier you were. It's generally decided that uh, this is not the best way to view art these days, but it is very impressive. Some art galleries still do it, just as a representation of how things used to be. Just a little way up the street, he came to a splendid tea shop. It was cheaper on the roof, so he went up. This is juicy, thought Snugglepot, as he sat at a small round table and ordered some grassroot cakes and aphis milk. Isn't it a nice blue day, he said to the plump blossom who was sitting opposite. Tis a scented afternoon, agreed the blossom. The cicadas are so trilly. Rippling, said Snugglepot. Did you see the regatta? Not quite, murmured the blossom. Was it good? Tree top, said Snugglepot. And the football match? Just missed it, sighed the blossom. Was it exciting? Simply bumping, replied Snugglepot, sucking at his straw. My husband is an artist, said the Blossom with pride. Why, she exclaimed, you're the nut who came to our house with, um, with, oh, Dr. Hocus Stickers, cried Snugglepot and the Blossom in one breath. The Blossom turned quite pink. Oh dear, she gasped, what a fright you've given me. I heard you were drowned at sea. Only a little, said Snugglepot. They laughed and chattered, and by and by the Blossom asked Snugglepot to come home with her and see her husband. But what about my friend, Mr. Lizard? Bring him too, said the Blossom. Thank you, said Snugglepot. But when he looked into the shed, Mr. Lizard was gone. Oh, where can he be? exclaimed Snugglepot. So strange, said the Blossom, but my house is only just across the road. We'll send a servant to keep watch for him. So saying, she led the way to her home. Here we can see that nice rooftop cafe where Snugglepot and the Blossom are enjoying their milk and cakes. Looks like it would be a great view out to the rest of Big Bad City. The artist was delighted to see Snugglepot and begged him to camp with them for a long time. So he did, and every day he went out looking for Cuddle Pie and Mr. Lizard. But never could he see or hear anything of them, till at last he grew quite thin with anxiety. And it is there, my friends, that we will leave poor Snugglepot. I am sorry to leave you in such suspense as to what is going to happen with himself and poor Mr. Lizard, who always seems to be getting into trouble, and Cuddle Pie and Ragged Blossom dwelling beneath the sea, and the bad Banksia men. But I promise that next time on Soft Stories we will finish Snugglepot and Cuddlepie, 
not just this story, but the book itself, for there are only a couple of pages left. So I hope you'll look forward to it, just as I will. And until we meet again, until that time, I wish you all the best, and goodbye.